alert the news, the charts, and go into Q and A. Uh, first comment I have is, uh, let's pull up a chart of the good old SPY ETF and look at this gap open this morning. So here you go. This is uh, what we call bull crap when you uh, you leapfrog from 148 to 157 without any opportunity of trading. Uh, so that's complete manipulation by the markets. Um, so what's what's the market so hyped up about? What's our positioning? Let's go through all of that today. Uh, the story that's being pushed is that we're going to hit the peak of this epidemic in the next three weeks and then be able to get people back to work uh, probably sometime in May. At least that's what's being pitched. Uh, but the whole reason we've done so well in 2020 is being able to ascertain that this is not correct and to have a better timeline of how long this economic pain is going to last and what investments you want to make to benefit from that. Uh, so I would actually tell you that we are no more than 0.1% complete. So if you thought of downloading this uh, virus into the human population as something like downloading a file on your computer, well, so far we've downloaded uh, probably about 0.1%. Let's just play it even safer and say 1% download complete. So if you take that into consideration, uh, you can realize that we're nowhere near the end of the pain. And in fact, we're about, uh, if, the, if the film was an hour and a half long, we've watched the first minute so far. Okay, so that's really the, uh, the big information. We had a little bit of a drop in the death count on April 5th. New York City starting to slow down a little bit. Uh, but again, remember the, the secret to, to creating the slowdown and the, the growth of this, you know, what we're gonna turn into an analogy is, of the download was to shut down the economy. Um, and so all this hope, all this money flowing into stocks is primarily from the Fed's uh, massive purchase of corporate bonds, massive purchase of US treasuries that's given all the big players some cash to play with uh, in the short term. Uh, my expectation is that cash is going to run out very quickly as uh, Main Street, not Wall Street, but Main Street slowly but surely loses their jobs, loses their income, can't pay their rent, has to start selling assets to stay above water, and this will turn into an overwhelming force that's going to push down on equities, probably down on real estate, and again, my expectation is the big push is into bonds. And the big giveaway today is uh, really that with stocks gapping open $10 higher uh, with a 5% return over Friday, your TLT should be getting crushed. And the TLT's return today is, uh, is only down 0.17%. So again, if you ever see stocks rallying and bonds staying strong, that's a big giveaway that you're, you're dealing with some market manipulation. Um, okay, so another key metric that would really change my outlook on this uh, is relative to, there's really one big hope that would change our outlook on this. Okay, so first of all, as you guys know, I'm waiting to see the logarithmic scale of the death count to flatline for a month to think that we've uh, done the right precautions that are actually working are gonna slow down the economic destruction. And that has to be followed up with mass. And I do believe that the bean counters out there have well calculated this with, the, uh, with all the medical experts and that they do have a plan to try to uh, reduce the economic losses as much as possible. The, the last thing, the overlords who run the world economies and these globalized corporations want is for everybody to essentially go on strike by staying at home because uh, their money machine stops printing money and their biggest asset, uh, which is these different equity positions, which they could never sell out of completely, can lose a lot of value. Um, so unfortunately, the only solution is severe economic downturn. Um, so what's the big thing that could change our outlook and to shorten the timeline. Well, if we thought 
that the download was further complete than expected. So if they could go out and sample a random asymptomatic group of citizens and find that a huge percentage of those people already contracted the honey badger disease, which we all know the code name for that. If that was the case, if we already had 20 to 30% of the population that already survived this, then we could see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I'd be hopping on the S&P 500 bandwagon right now. Uh, but unfortunately, I just don't think that's the case. And so uh, if we pick a random place like Albuquerque, where we live, which has about a half a million people. And we have the drive-by measurement here. So we're way out in the middle of nowhere. You know, we're, I think looking at Albuquerque or any random city like this is a pretty good randomized look at how widespread it is. Well, they're finding that only 500 people approximately, and we're up to 600 now in Albuquerque have it. And this is with a huge amount of tests, probably 5,000 to 10,000 tests so far. Um, so based on the data that I'm seeing in smaller locations, my reasoning tells me that around one out of 1,000 people, maybe one out of 500 people in America currently have it. And so again, that does lead us back to believe that uh, we're close to, we're less than 1% of completing uh, the infection. And in terms of hitting herd immunity, uh, we need to get over 50%. Uh, so anyone who's hoping that this is going to slow down and that we're going to be able to reopen the economy uh, anytime soon, I believe, is, is way early in that prediction. Uh, so that's the basis of, of what we're looking at in terms of uh, the key fundamental reason the stock market's in trouble. Uh, okay, so with that said, let's look at our trade alert in detail, look at some charts, some news, do some Q&A, and, uh, and then also we can open up the mic for, for more discussion after that. Okay, so the trade alert has not changed, not even a tiny bit. Uh, we're still expecting the S&P 500 to tank uh, for quite some time. Uh, quite possibly for over a year. Now, my outlook will change again once we've taken the right precautions to fix the underlying problem, which again, I believe is a 60-day lockdown that's synchronized worldwide and then followed up with the emergence of masks for everyone. And this would allow us to safely get back to work, slow down the spread, and deal with the really the horror show, show that's just beginning to pop up at the hospitals. So again, if this was an hour and a half flick, you've watched less than one minute of this flick. Uh, so any sort of hope that this is going to be all over in a few weeks, I really believe is uh, quite foolish. Um, okay, so let me go through the trade alert. So we have $2.2 trillion that has to be sold through the government. The people who buy that are central banks, primary dealers, big hedge funds, and last on the list are retirement folks. And again, you hardly ever hear anybody pitch bonds. Now, Jim Cramer is begging Larry Kudlow uh, to create a war bond because Americans want to help out. So we are starting to see the media uh, change their tune from pitching, hey, buy the stocks, to hey, let's buy some bonds. Now, the truth is that TLT is going to be your war bond and Munchen spent plenty of time talking about where, uh, why that's where they want to sell most of this debt in that 30-year treasury. Now, they're also going to add the 20-year, and as soon as they can figure out the programming, apparently we'll have a 50 and 100-year. So the assets under management and the TLT are going to explode higher, uh, probably two to three times the size over the course of this uh, capital raise that the government must fund, and I believe uh, with the 50 and 100 year treasury added to the mix, that's going to further leverage this interest rate play. So the, the punch behind the TLT is going to get more powerful uh, as we patiently await the government to sell this debt. Uh, so if you have a reduced economic output and you got to go fund more capital into the bond market, 
Uh, that's the big picture view. Now we can understand the cause, but the big picture of the mechanics is that money must be flowed into the bond market and it has to come from somewhere. So that somewhere quite likely is going to be real estate crashing as people can't pay their mortgages and rents because they're unemployed uh, and also out of global stocks. Now, if you're following our basic program that trades Monday, Wednesday, Friday, per $75,000, we currently have what I call the foundation of our house, of our trading plan. So it's this set of five uh, put options, which are currently all a buy and hold. If you're an existing member, we're not changing anything. I am tempted to increase our risk in this, but currently not taking that action today. So there's no change in our put options. And remember, this investment is like buying life insurance uh, for your stock portfolio, and it's giving you insurance through 2022. So even though we're seeing some drawdown on our life insurance plan for protecting stocks, uh, this is coverage that lasts for, uh, for just under, I guess it's now at almost exactly 21 months. So if you take the loss we're holding in our puts and divide that over the time that this is providing the downside protection, uh, it's really not that bad. Also, I'll be happy to uh, likely double down, not on this position, which already has three, not ideal inclusion. but most likely I will double down on these four positions um, in the near future. So the highest I would sit back and wait to take that trade would probably be around 270 on the SPY. Uh, although I'm also looking at time as a reason to increase that position. So currently I'm looking at the potential of making that move on Friday of this week. So if we don't start to see some serious downside by Friday, uh, expect that I will increase this position right here. Okay, so again, these are the foundation of our house. It's something like buying life insurance, but we're not buying life insurance for one month. We're buying our life insurance for a period that goes through 318, 2022. Now we're not holding stocks, so we're not hedging those yet, but we are anticipating that we're going to rotate into these five ETFs, which are healthcare, biotech, medical device, e-commerce, and then a defense. Um, so we can see that the stocks are highly correlated. And even though these sectors will be huge beneficiaries of the stimulus plan and the economic destruction being caused, uh, which we're gonna have to fund at a government level, you can see they're all highly correlated to stocks. So if you believe that the stock market has further systematic, systematic downside risk, we wanna wait to purchase these shares. So again, we wanna have the put options long and open as we begin to fill this position. So right now, our house has a foundation with our put options and the walls of our house are currently in cash, but we're gonna convert those into these five ETFs at the right time. Okay, so that's not a lot of actions to take for our basic membership. It's something you can put on, sit back. And I do believe if this was the only thing you did this year, you would be very handsomely rewarded uh, with no other action. Uh, but there's a lot of opportunities when markets make big moves. So what's the next big play? Well, we're gonna actually show you part of our pro membership positions today. Uh, so the, the roof of your house is the bond market. That's that 30 year treasury. And currently, I'm sorry, this was a typo. That's per 75,000 right here. I believe uh, last Friday I was editing what we would do if that was, if you didn't have the full 75 with Karen. So my apologies on that. So per 75,000, we have 200 shares of the TLT and 400 shares of GDX. So no change. TLT, we look at as the roof of the house that you're building. Uh, and that has provided great protection for our trading plan all year, as well as last year. Every little blip of volatility, the TLT has done its job and spiked. There's been one time where it failed to do its job uh, which I'll cover in a little bit, but it quickly rebounded. And that was primarily because huge central banks were so underwater in stocks that they had to cover and sell some of their treasury position. Um, and we saw the Fed have to pick up a trillion dollars in debt 
that was sold primarily uh, from primary dealers, hedge funds, and central banks in a very short period of time as they had to reduce risk, reduce exposure to the markets. Now, commodities, I use the analogy that it's something like the electricity or the plumbing of your house. Right now, we're playing GDX with that part of our portfolio. Uh, at the right time, I do want to pick up some US oil companies, but I do believe, again, we're way too early to jump into that bet. Now, both of these positions have limited downside risk because we also have a put. So on the TLT, you own the 164 TLT put that expires on Thursday. Oh, and a note that we don't have markets trading on Friday. Uh, so we'll, we'll consider adding to our puts either this Wednesday or next Monday at the earliest. Uh, Thursday, we will flip out our downside protection on the TLT and buy a new TLT that expires next Friday. These positions are currently not recommended for new investors. That's because they are in the money. They're far more expensive today than they were when we first put those trades on. So we don't want to have too much exposure. Um, although this Thursday, I do intend to look at adding in some new TLT call options to give us a little extra leverage betting on a bond market rally that will last uh, likely for several years as they have to raise trillions of dollars to fund all of this. And don't forget, now they're talking about a huge infrastructure bill. So that's even more money that's going to be sucked out of the real economy, out of stocks and real estate, and uh, pushed straight into the government's uh, Coffer, I guess you could call it. So currently the only open positions we have uh, that are recommended today for anyone just starting to follow is to pick up that 164 TLT put. Again, we want that to go to zero because we're long the underlying asset. Uh, we have the 170 January 15th, 2021 TLT call, which is still a good buy. Hey, Our G hey. On that too, uh, I just want to help clarify too, you only want to get that TLT put if you have the underlying asset in TLT itself. Yeah. The same thing with GDX. So GDX has been all over the place. We've seen it go to 19. We've seen it pop up uh, to 26. We've seen it go back down to 23, back to 26. I love the fundamentals of GDX. Cheap oil, expensive gold, and a price dis discrepancy between the real barbellic relic and what's being pitched in the paper markets. So that's a position I do want to gradually grow upon uh, every 90 to 120 days. So right now we have about 12% of our portfolio in GDX, but when you add in the downside protection, your total risk between now and May 15th is very small. So look, when I put this trade on, my total risk was 1.2% over that period. Long term, I believe GDX can rally towards 80 to to $100. And I believe this will probably be a position that we can hold on to longer than the TLT. So stocks were the first to tank. Uh, after that, I think you're going to see the bond market's going to be in trouble. And then, uh, and then finally, gold should hit its peak as bonds are starting to get into some trouble because cash will uh, find it the only escape. So we have the Mary put on our TLT and on GDX, and that provides the downside protection. Now we have some GLD call options. I'm going to let go of the 158 GLD call tomorrow and this GLD call next Tuesday. So you guys have a good heads up as to when I intend to let go of those. As far as replacing them, I think we're going to see that gold is going to be correlated to stocks. So I am hoping that we're going to see gold sell off alongside stocks in the coming months and get a new opportunity to buy some leap options on GLD. So that's my expectation is that central banks will dump gold at the same time that they let stocks have the next big sell off. And that will be our cue. Uh, to buy the dip in the gold market. Now, as far as GDX, uh, it's a lot different than gold. So really spot gold is competing against GDX. And 
Uh, we're starting to see some divergences, but I'm not convinced that gold miners can go up in the face of stocks crashing. So that's why we have the married put. That's why we're not adding to the position and we'll have the same outlook uh, to potentially sell our put during the next crash and maybe add to that exposure um, in the coming months. Now, I'm also looking at a put option on FXI, which I'll quite likely add tomorrow. So keep a lookout for a trailer. We don't have a webinar tomorrow, uh, but we're going to do some slight modifications to our portfolio. So there quite likely will be a trade alert That'll be very simple, very few tweaks uh, that I do anticipate releasing tomorrow, which again will be to let go of this GLD call and uh, quite likely add an FXI put option. So again, I believe that we're gonna see US retaliate against China and start creating economic sanctions uh, against China, especially if they fail to, to meet their phase one trade deal obligations. <clears throat> which they're almost guaranteed to do because of their massive economic slowdown. Now, we still have a long uh, put option on emerging markets, which we're still holding. That's up uh, something like 700%. So don't take that trade today, and we're still holding it. How's our portfolio looking? <clears throat> well, we have a drawdown in April, but that's primarily, it's almost completely from our put options. And I do want you to think of that as a two-year investment. So if you take that drawdown and divide it out over 24 months, it's really uh, not very much. And again, that's the investment we need to make to have confidence to buy stocks uh, during a period of extreme volatility. Uh, the basic portfolio is currently showing some drawdown uh, less than the S&P 500 and it's positioned to do very well from a stock crash and then have the hedge to buy stocks uh, as we're as we're seeing markets collapse, buy and hold portfolio has no changes. We were up a little bit more on Friday, down a little bit today. Remember, we have inverse leveraged ETFs on tech and and banks in this portfolio, so that's where we're seeing a little drawdown today. But again, once you realize that we're less than what you, know, you know, if this is a hour and a half movie, we're one minute into the movie, and it's a horror film, unfortunately. So extremely confident and don't see us really changing course very much. Uh, in terms of just an overview of what to expect in positioning, if we hit 270 on the SPY uh, or we haven't seen volatility probably by next Monday, I do anticipate doubling these four positions. These are the stocks that we want to buy, but not until the VIX has spiked well over 100 and we're at least 50% down on the S&P 500 from the recent high. My entry strategy will not be to just buy the equity. I'm expecting volatility to be extremely high, which means it'll be very attractive to sell put options against these ETFs. So that'll be the initial strategy is we'll sell out of the money puts for high uh, weekly yields on these ETFs. Now, if, if the stock does, if the ETF does go below our put, We'll keep the premium and fill the position, and that'll be our entry point into these um, into these five ETFs. Quite likely won't take on extra exposure on the TLT in terms of the underlying ETF. It's already just hovering over 40% of our assets, but we are managing the risk with the investment in the puts. Now keep in mind, we want the puts to go to zero and we want the underlying asset to go up. So that's the case for TLT as well as GDX. To get a little extra juice and a little extra exposure to my favorite market, I'm buying call options at opportune times. So I do anticipate adding to our TLT call options this week. Uh, and we'll be looking at uh, going into months beyond 619. So we already have good exposure uh, and extra juice in these trades for the next three months. So I'll probably start building a position into future months uh, as early as tomorrow, but possibly as late as Thursday. So a heads up on that. GDX, this is a position I'm willing to add upon, but I do want to see uh, if I want to see the market crash first, because I think that both gold and gold miners could potentially have volatility that's correlated 
to stocks. Now we've seen some small little signs that uh, they can diverge, but we can also uh, ascertain that weaker markets like cryptocurrencies, gold, and gold miners are actually acting as a leading indicator because the same big players who are buying and selling their stock positions are also using a systematic strategy to buy all correlated assets under the sun. So we're actually seeing gold and crypto start to spike before stocks spike. And we're also seeing them start to tank before stocks tank. So why? Well, I would presume that the same big guy who's buying and selling his entire asset class and, and toggling between a bullish strategy and a bearish strategy are causing the same moves. And so that is quite a nice giveaway uh, that can give us a heads up. So we're protected on GDX. We have the 23 put through May 15th. So really we have very limited risk holding that position. Um, and I may consider uh, some optimizations on this position, which would mean buying a more expensive put. Now I'm trying to create a tax friendly environment for our followers who are doing these trades in a non tax deferred account. And so the primary strategy is to hold the ETFs for over a year to get a lower tax burden. So the strategy to make that work and still have a low volatility return is to use put options to protect against downside risks. So I may add a more expensive put to this strategy uh, while still holding this 23 GDX put uh, in case we do get some drawdown because we are sitting on a pretty nice return on GDX currently. So that's something I'm considering. GLD, I'm gonna shy away from. Uh, again, we have a pretty good plan of when to sell these this Tuesday, next Tuesday, and then I'm gonna wait for a significant sell-off and then look at two-year leaps instead of these short terms. I do believe that the bond market's gonna hog all the fun for quite some time and that the uh, gold bugs may be a little bit early. Now, the reason why I still wanna have some exposure is because we're doing rate cuts in quantitative easing at the same time. Usually that just doesn't happen. Usually it's rate cuts until the fundamental problem is resolved through the government's intervention. And then at the end of buying and holding the debt, the banks get their payoff when they release QE. And so the banks sell the bonds to the Fed for a profit and buy up stocks at super cheap prices. Um, okay, so we may be early on gold, but because we're doing rate cuts in QE at the same time and oil's cheap, I am a fan of gold. Uh, Emerging markets portfolio, we currently have the EEM put, I think FXI, even though FXI is outperforming emerging markets is gonna be a potentially a max profit. So that means if they were to outlaw investments into China, that we could end up getting the complete strike price of our put and just lose the premium. So that's the maximum gain you could possibly make on a put option. Timeline on that, uh, we'll see how quickly the tune changes in the geopolitical sphere. The other big trade I'm looking at is shorting the Hong Kong. At first, I wanted to short the Chinese currency, which is far more risky because it's so illiquid and China is always manipulating it. Plus, we're seeing the Fed try to weaken the dollar. It's not working, but they're trying to by printing massive capital, uh, creating lines of credit with all the big foreign uh, reserves. Um, but again, I do believe we're gonna point the blame of all this economic downturn on China and that this will play out in the course of uh, the next 12 months. So I'll be looking at a quite uh, long in duration FXI put with probably about a 1%, 2% maximum risk profile uh, in hopes that they do create some sanctions and tank investments into these ADR products that funnel billions of US taxpayer money, pension fund money, uh, into what I believe is our greatest adversary, which is China. Uh, so that's how we're shaping up in our portfolio returns. I'm gonna take a break for Q and A, and then we'll look at some news and charts. And we got a lot of chat boxes popping up. So put this on the screen now. And, uh, oh yeah, and then uh, Dean wanted to share a story with one of our new clients who was able to 
uh, take advantage of Anderson Law, set up the legal structure that he was uh, talking about, and is able to write off his investment into our uh, company as a as a write off, so he can reduce that against his tax liabilities. Very smart move, and welcome and thanks for joining a lifetime membership, Mike. Uh, so yeah, I'll definitely go into that. Randy says, can you talk a little bit about Yang? It's underwater since I acquired it. I know it's tied to FXI. Yeah, so we want to be long the Yang because we think the U.S. is going to retaliate against China. That's the, really the core reason on that. Uh, but China, again, has taken the best steps of all nations to really deal with this crisis. In fact, they seem to know exactly what to do. And don't forget, they knew about this in November. They had their first symptomatic cases in December. They had doctors yelling about it and getting thrown in jail in December, right when they signed the trade deal. Uh, they took all the rich little communist kids out of school on January 2nd. Then in Wuhan, where this was all breaking out, they threw massive parties for the public, ensuring it spread ahead of the single highest traffic moment in China every year, which is their uh, their their New Year holiday. So just tens of millions of people going in and out of Wuhan during this period of time in, in China in general. So they essentially assured the spread of, of this uh, and then didn't tell anybody about it till January 22nd, right when they were entering their holiday week. Uh, also, don't forget the WHO is telling us China says it's not contagious, don't worry about it. And they also were uh, starting to uh, create a monopoly on all the products related to this. Plus, you know, while they're reporting that there's 3,000 deaths, uh, which there's more people who accidentally fall to their death in the United States every year than there are deaths from this, you know, they shut down a trillion dollar a year of per month economy in China because of a handful of deaths relative to their population and started springing up hospitals all over the country. So again, that was our really our cue that something wasn't wrong. Also seeing the Chinese stock market crash when the S&P 500 was going up right after the trade deal was signed was another big giveaway. So that's why we wanna be long the Yang. If US attacks China in any way, shape or form, which would probably be economic, not, not a hot war, uh, they can easily cut off money flows to Chinese products, which again, uh, you can't audit the returns of any Chinese company. It's against the communist law. So that's really uh, just basic rules of, of how we invest in stocks here in America. So I think that'll be a pretty easy move and when we'll hit the big payday in uh, something like Yang or FXI. Okay, so Andrew says, question, why not buy these puts if you don't have 75 to play with? Isn't it all relative and proportionate? So, so yeah, so you could do that, Andrew, but you're gonna be having a much different risk profile than I am. So I'm putting up a small amount of risk for a long period of time in the mindset that I'm gonna buy stocks during a panic. Um, so, so yeah, you, you could follow it, but I would advise to, to try to keep the same risk profile, which would mean that uh, the percentage I'm risking against 75K, you should try to be close to that, to whatever capital you're playing with. So essentially, if I had less than 75K, I would probably only be looking at myself, the top two, uh, which is when I think we could probably be jumping into these positions uh, potentially. So that's a good, good question and a good way to optimize it. Now I'm not, um, the other way to do it, Andrew, is just to follow the buy and hold if you have less, because you get very similar profile, uh, exactly the same risk profile right here. Sorry, let me get back to the, here's how our buy and hold is positioned right now. So that's probably a better bet uh, and a lot less work. I don't see us touching this very often this year. And, and last year, we hardly touched that. A 
Okay, Pat says, um, did you see that Becton Dickinson and company is shipping? You had the coronavirus test today. It takes 15 minutes to run the test. Oh, I didn't see that, but that's great news. And uh, and yeah, guys, I'm not hoping anything ill for, for America. Uh, but unfortunately, the data I have tells me we're less than 1% complete of transmitting this disease through the population. And until it's worked its way through, you're going to see that the governments can't afford uh, to allow it to spread too quickly because it will overwhelm the healthcare system. And it really hits the voting population uh, the hardest. So if, if the voting population doesn't feel like they're being protected, uh, there goes your election. So I, I highly doubt that we're going to be back to work anytime soon. Jack Kent says, Fossey said that it's likely this will be a yearly infection. It's likely to increase again this fall, even if it abates in the summer. Yeah, I don't think it's going to abate in the. It just depends on when we do a 60 day shutdown and come back out with, with masks. That's going to really change my opinion uh, is when we can accomplish something like that. Now, if other countries aren't taking those actions, then we're going to have to keep international uh, travel highly restrictive, which is what China is doing. Funny enough, China did this. It, the Chinese knew exactly what to do and their biggest trading partners had the least impact from this. When you look at Germany and Russia, Russia shut down their walls before they had a single case. That's funny. Same with North Korea. Very interesting. Um, but yeah, so the reality is that this is going to be a two year economic strain and we need to get a vaccine rolled out worldwide before it's really back to, to normal. Uh, so thinking that we can get back to work in May is foolish. Uh, we're probably going to be seeing peak deaths in 30 days. Now, the lockdown I've seen should potentially slow the exponential. It's not going to stop it from growing exponentially, but it is going to slow down the rate of exponential growth. So I think we could see a big head fake. Uh, it's really a hardcore lockdown that works, not the kind of quasi lockdowns where it's, we trust you to do it. Um, and so we're seeing that work in Italy, South Korea, China, really the best case studies of nations that have dealt with this effectively. Uh, okay, Mike says on CNBC, Larry Kudlow reacted favorably to Jim Cramer's suggestion on a 30 year war bond at an interest rate of about one point. Yeah, I think they're just gonna put on the on the normal 30 year, but um, we'll see. of course I'm highly interested in anything related to government bonds. Um, a lot of people mentioning stocks are rocking, Murray's down a little bit. Uh, yep, so let's take a look at some charts and some news. Uh, we'll start with some charts. Okay, so here's the jaws of death. Uh, remember, we've been watching this slowly play out. Uh, the prediction is these two would cross, they've crossed, and now I believe they're going to blow past one another. Um, so this is again, S&P 500 right here, uh, which is trading nicely in these ranges and it broke out of that. Uh, we started shorting it like right here. It tanked and then they came in with $4 trillion um, and have created quite a nice little dead cat bounce. So from our perspective, uh, it's been very little drawdown in our total return and giving us more time to educate our crew and potentially double down on those front month puts. Uh, if, we, uh, if we can make it to next Monday is what I'm thinking right now, I'll potentially double down. If not, I already like our exposure and, and perfectly happy. So if this starts us off before Monday, I probably won't change anything, but if it's still trading anywhere near this level by next Monday to expect uh, to increase the exposure on those puts. Now the FXI trade, um, I may most likely place tomorrow. So keep a look for that. Okay, so here's your SPY. And again, it gapped open. Anytime market gaps open, that's extreme manipulation, especially for it to gap open $10. Uh, it's pure and utter manipulation. And the market tends to go back and refill uh, during the trading day any prices that have been missed. 
So they use the futures market to gap it open and bid it high this morning. Here's your TLT. Uh, we were extremely leveraged in the TLT all the way up to here and believe that this would continue to go higher and the stock market crashed, which is what you want in March, but it crashed so fast alongside oil at the same time that big players had to sell, not what they wanted to sell, but what they could. And so they all dumped about a trillion dollars of treasuries in this little move right here. Now it wasn't all on the TLT, it was spread through the whole curve of the treasury market. Uh, we didn't change our forecast, not one bit, and it bounced right back, nice and healthy. So again, the bond market uh, is really where you wanna be when you think economic output's gonna slow and you think the government's gonna blow out deficits. And both of these are essentially guaranteed uh, for the next month or rather the next year to two years. And it could unfortunately be much longer than that. Okay, dollar index is my favorite leading indicator for problems ahead. Uh, we should have the dollar crashing because we're cut rates to zero. We've put out a 2.2 trillion stimulus plan, which we're just starting to fund. We've put out $4 trillion in credit through the Fed to every agency and institution and central bank under the sun, uh, but people just can't get enough dollars. So the, the big story here is that uh, really threefold. One is everybody around the globe uses the dollar to transact. And there's been a rush to safety in the dollar. Two, all the debt out there is outstanding in dollars. So to pay that interest, they need dollars. So if there's a big shortage in dollars, they're forced to either sell their local currency into dollars, which is what causes this directly to go up, or an alternative is they can sell US denominated assets to get their hands on needed dollars. So that means selling stocks or treasuries or corporate bonds. Now, if you think that uh, bond market's going up and stocks going down, which asset are you going to sell today uh, to create your dollar needs probably you're going to sell stocks especially after this big bounce and it's quite obvious that the economy is not going to recover anytime soon so dollar index does signal trouble globally and uh even though we had a little bit of a sell-off right here it's popping its head right back up so the last time we had some pretty uh severe economic downturn let's go to a little bit smaller time range. So we can see it got as high as uh, 99.89. And this was on February 20th. We saw the dollar index crash all the way to 94, spike all the way back up to 103 by March 19th. And so I do believe the dollar is headed higher. Uh, which is bad for stocks. Here's the 30-year treasury. And we're comparing the U.S. treasury against the German. Now, Germany, China, Russia are all supposedly dealing with this far better than everyone else, uh, which may make this correlation change. But I I expect that the U.S. is not going to allow uh, China to get a head start for uh, without causing some pain first. So I do believe we'll see some economic sanctions on China, which will be bad for Germany. And again, uh, our main interest in following the German 30-year bond is to, uh, as long as we see a spread, then we can anticipate that the 30 year US Treasury can go even lower and lower. Um, where are we thinking about taking profits on the TLT? This 180 mark, I believe, is going to be a pretty hard level to break through. And where I do anticipate taking some profits, buying some puts to protect the TLT, um, and then waiting for a sell off to load back up into new call options. So, exactly when we hit that, uh, We'll see, but that is what really the world's been trained to take profits on. And you can see that little blip right here where we 
crashed to 0.8% yield on that 30 year for just a, is literally for a few hours that that lasted. Uh, so as we approach the 1% yield, I'll likely take some big profits on our bond position and add downside protection. Now, again, our goal is to hold the TLT for over a year to get the lower tax rate. Um, so we can use put options to help uh, protect the volatility and not have to sell. Now, if you're doing this in a tax account, tax deferred account, uh, then you can buy and sell your TLT whenever you like. So I will give advice on both types of accounts when we get to that moment in time. Okay, here's emerging markets chart comparison. So we have emerging markets in the candlestick. We have the SPY in purple. So you can see those two are highly correlated. Uh, we've got South Korea, which is a US ally and a great leading indicator uh, for US equities. And then we have China outperforming. That's funny. So China, if you look at the, the really what's under the hood, at least what we can tell, because you can't audit, uh, they have a huge real estate bubble. They've got manufacturing uh, evaporating and they're probably about to have a whole bunch of economic sanctions put on them. So when you look at it from that point of view, I do believe that there's a great opportunity to buy puts on FXI. Okay, gold market. So we've got GLD, uh, spot gold in the candlestick. We have the S&P 500 in the purple. And then we have spot silver in yellow. And we have the gold miners in orange down below. And the most interesting thing here uh, is to see gold showing some strength as the S&P 500 sold off. But keep in mind that we are seeing gold uh, cryptocurrencies act as a leading indicator because the same big players who are systematically buying and selling U.S. equities are also systematically buying and selling every asset class under the sun uh, with computers. So they're not really caring uh, whether or not gold's fundamentals line up right now or not. Uh, so Unfortunately, I do anticipate that we could have some downside risks in gold in the near future. So I am preparing to embrace for that in our portfolio and look for opportunities to get it cheaper. Now, what's what's the play at what's the you know what's the fundamental forces here? Well, central banks really don't want people buying gold. That's what they buy to protect the value of their central bank. So why on earth would they want you stealing all the gold from them, right? They want retail to do what? They want them to buy stocks. And now we're finally hearing them say the, the bond word, you know? You barely ever hear that on mainstream media. Uh, so the last thing they want you to do is make a ton of money on gold. So what would they potentially do? Sell gold. They have 99% of the gold assets and it's very easy for them to sell a bunch um, we know that GLD has a huge short position against it by JP Morgan and HSBC. And GLD is a fractional reserve product. So it's just like the BS banking system we have for the entire economy. They've created a leveraged uh, GLD product. So I do anticipate that in the near future, when stocks sell off, that we could have a high risk gold selling off at the same time. Um, so I'm not counting that we'll see a divergence and gold continued strength in the face of a stock crash at this time. Okay, now we're looking at the dollar index, which again is a basket of currencies against the dollar. Hey, uh, Jason, just real quick, what was your timeline on, on gold? Uh, Dan O'Connell asked that. That's a, that a great question, Dan. Yeah, I think that bonds are gonna hog all the fun for one to two years at a minimum, and that gold's big rally is gonna come come in sometime in the middle of that or towards the end of it. Okay, so we're looking at uh, the biggest currency uh, markets of all, which are the currency markets. So again, DXY is a basket of currencies against the dollar, and we can see this tremendous strength. Uh, now we were seeing the yen, the Japanese yen, and other safe haven currencies showing some strength, uh, but today, everything is losing value against the dollar. So in orange, we have CNH, that's your offshore 
yuan, the Chinese currency. Now, Chinese don't like it when uh, U.S. goes and prints a bunch of money and devalues their currency, uh, essentially giving the U.S. a huge advantage. That's what China does, of course. So why would they let us do that? So it makes sense China's trying to devalue their currency, keep it at that seven to one ratio um, versus letting it strengthen. If it strengthens, that does no good for China. We have the euro. Now, Europe's really couple of weeks ahead, maybe a month ahead of uh, the United States in terms of economic shutdowns and problems. Uh, so I can see why their currency is having some weakness here. The Australian dollars is purple one. If you do want to risk it and plan a vacation, I highly suggest going to Australia. When you look at the uh, relative sell-off in the Australian dollar uh, against the US dollar, it's up. You're, you've got 40% more buying power today than you did uh, several years ago. So you'd have to go back to uh, 2013, but most of this move, uh, this recent move hit in January. So from January alone, you're up 20% in your buying power. Uh, so there's no currency really standing up to the dollar right now. They're all weakening. So again, that does cause an incentive to sell stocks and get that liquidity you need to run your financial system in, in your business, which is dollars. Okay, this is probably one of the big reasons the market's having such a big rally is that we're talking about tariffs to help support US oil companies. Um, and they're hoping that this Russian Saudi fight over oil is gonna to come to an end. I think it's just getting started, unfortunately and that the move by the Russians to devalue oil was designed to cause trouble for the uh, for United States and to create this dollar shortage globally, which essentially forces us to print a bunch of dollars and in the long run devalue uh, the currency, which I believe is the end goal in game here for China and Russia is to get the world off the dollar standard as we devalue it to try to protect every asset at the same time. And so far it's working. Uh, we've, we're expanding our balance sheet at record pace. Stock market had a vicious sell-off, oil markets down, US oil and natural gas companies are in big trouble. The pipelines are full, there's nowhere to store the oil and there's really no big demand for oil anytime soon. So I anticipate that will get worse uh, sooner. But that is a huge little jump up there. Um, okay, so here we're looking at crypto. Fascinating that the same people who are buying stocks are also having a tiny percentage of their capital flow into gold and crypto. And uh, what we're going to note from this is, while I'm not telling you to buy or sell cryptos uh, in our pro membership, I will give you some signals in the boot camp. Um, it's it's really acting as a great leading indicator. Now you gotta be careful because it's super volatile, but um, let me just zoom in on this so you can see how accurate this has been recently. Okay, so in this period, we can see the general move was a bullish move in stocks. And you can see we had a bullish move in, I gotta zoom in, sorry guys, it's too hard to see. Okay, so let's just see some pretty broad correlations here. So we had a bit of a sell-off in general or volatility in stocks over this course. And you had a huge sell-off in crypto the entire way. Uh, we had a broad rally in stocks through really February as we signed the trade deal, cut interest rates, all bullish for crypto. You see this huge rally in Bitcoin. Uh, and then we had the sell-off in stocks. Now note that cryptos began to sell off as the momentum slowed down in stocks and they sold off viciously. Uh, but who stopped the sell-off first? Bitcoin did. Bitcoin rallied way before stocks hit a bottom. 
So really the only explanation for that is that you have a huge, huge, huge group of massive money managers that are playing this in a correlated fashion. Uh, so it is providing a good leading indicator for us. Now, again, I'm not recommending to buy crypto right here uh, as I think they will, it will sell off alongside gold and stocks in the near future and provide a good entry point to get in cheap. Okay, next chart, we're now looking at what will form the walls of our house. And so uh, the ETFs we picked in the short term are actually outperforming the S&P 500. Uh, but if we zoom out a little bit, uh, we can see that they're still following the general direction. So while the ETFs we like, they make sense, they should outperform the index. Uh, because of all the money being handed to them from from the government or at least they're going to be handed money from the government that this hasn't been raised it hasn't been handed over yet uh, i do believe that they will follow the general index far lower so uh, that'll be our entry point is once we've crashed significantly lower Okay, next chart. This is a little more specific to the crypto world. And the big question is, does it make sense to invest in all the little altcoins at this stage? Uh, and unfortunately, I think you're gonna see that it really doesn't make sense to waste your time in all the other uh, currencies right now. Um, and this has been interesting. It's kind of like the spot gold taking off before gold miners can do well analogy. And the same with gold to silver. Um, so I do anticipate that you're going to see the best return in the top two assets under management uh, digital currencies, which, it, which do have totally different roles in, in this new digital currency world, which is Ethereum and Bitcoin. But we can see some of the smaller cap uh, Coins like Ripple and EOS, who are massive in terms of funding, are not outperforming just the broad Bitcoin in any way, shape, or form, at least not for very long periods of time. Um, and really, the only one that is having a little bit of an advantage uh, that I like is uh, Ethereum. So let me zoom out a little bit to one week chart. So you can see in the grand scheme of things, uh, for the value you're trying to get with a tiny position in these assets, Bitcoin uh, just does the job better right now. So my hope is to actually pick up Bitcoin around the 4,000 mark. So I have limit orders uh, scattered at different price levels, which I'll give to you bootcamp folks this Thursday when we review the updated spreadsheet software. And I did push our bootcamp from Tuesday to Thursday to keep the schedule normal for everyone. And we're fine, fine, uh, finalizing the programming that'll automatically input your option prices. So that's coming in. Let's see, I have a few more questions and we'll jump into the news. DD, what do we tell ourselves? It's hard to believe the market's going lower on an update like today. And now the, so the Fed's not buying stocks, Fed's buying bonds. Um, so yeah, I just would say, you know, realize that economic outputs reduced and it's not going to come back anytime soon. Stocks are valued on profits, revenues, earnings, growth, and we haven't really seen the impact of that yet. So you've got 12 months of bad data, uh, to crash stocks and, uh, they're spending their 280 billion in corporate, uh, bonds that the fed bought, uh, in one punch. So they're, they're just letting it all out right now. Uh, Dan says timeline on gold for the sell off. I, I believe gold will sell off in tandem with stocks or at least there's a risk of that. Um, so when that happens, I believe that will, I believe the sell off will begin uh, by the end of April uh, because we're gonna not be going back to work as right now this whole rally is with the hope that we're gonna hit the peak in three weeks and get everybody back to work in May. Uh, but unfortunately, I think that timeline is, is way off, which is our big opportunity here. Pat says, Trump said today he's willing to put a tariff on foreign oil. 
so, yep, I, I saw that. That's interesting. But meanwhile, the rest of the world's going to be getting cheap oil. So that's a huge disadvantage for US companies uh, who need oil. So we'll see. I, not quite sure on that. But how would this affect the uh, the TLT positions we have? Nothing's going to really affect the TLT position. Um, what affects the TLT position is if the Fed is going to cut interest rates and the government's going to create deficits. Uh, so those two things are not going to change. So rates are at zero, and government's creating massive deficits. But are, are, isn't the governments of the other countries buying uh, T-bills to trade oil? Uh, yeah, the whole world needs oil, sure. So I'm just wondering if that affects the 30-year or does that affect the 10-year or the five-year or the two-year? What, what particularly, what bill do they buy? Central banks buy all, every duration there is and spread okay. it out, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the analysis for TLT is, do you think there's a deficit that's going to increase? Yeah. So companies, you want growth of profits. The bond market, you want growth of deficits, kind of to simplify life. So if you think we're going to grow our deficit at an accelerating pace, then you want to own bonds. And, and it's not affected by the oil trade at all, is what you're saying? A little bit, but not much. The big okay. picture is we're creating massive deficits at a faster pace than ever in history. Okay. So beyond that, um, our analysis of TLT is pretty much cemented by that. Great. Thank you. Yep. Now, some people would believe that if there's inflation from high oil prices, that you'd want to uh, not own the bond market. But our Fed doesn't care about inflation. They've told us that. And there's a bigger problem than inflation. Uh, and that's 30 to 50% unemployment rates if we don't blow out our deficit. Uh, so that's really the big picture there. Uh, and yeah, the, the TLT is completely manipulated by the Fed, which just bought a trillion dollars, a trillion dollars of these products to make sure that the bond market is nice and happy. And uh, so let's look at what a trillion dollar sell off in the bond market looked like. So this is your trillion dollar sell off that the Fed purchased 100% of and is continuing to buy. They're backstopping this product because this is central banks, primary dealers, they have to buy this, this debt. And they have to be rewarded for it. So my expectation on TLT is a slow, gradual rise for no less than a year, but probably more like two, two years minimum. Two years is really quite hopeful. Two years assumes that, uh, and I believe this can actually go parabolic, depending on how bad this gets. So we can be really hopeful that social distancing works, that masks work, that the rest of the world is going to play along, and that we can safely get back to work in the next 90 to 120 days, it's at least to some fashion. Now, we're not going to be running at full capacity, and we're still going to have these massive deficits that we have to fund for the next two years. Uh, but this could go on a lot longer if we don't come up with a vaccine. And I'll remind you that we never created a vaccine for HIV, which has wiped out 35 million people. And we've never created a vaccine for SARS uh, 17 years later. The one that they did create uh, didn't work. It created a uh, autoimmune response that killed you. So uh, at least mice. So it's, it's a, like an atomic bomb, an invisible atomic bomb has been released on the world, uh, but it doesn't happen in a snap. And that's what people are having a hard time calculating is understanding that this atomic bomb is only completed less than 1% of its transmission. So if this is an hour and a half video we're watching, we're now a minute in. 
Um, and that's really the big picture. So, so yeah, we got a stock rally, uh, but how did that, you know, why is it rallying? Well, the Fed gave corporations $280 billion last month, and they went and bought their own stocks with it as the insiders are trying to get out of town. Um, and what comes next is a full year of miserable economic data, which will slowly but surely replay. I don't think slowly, I think it'll quickly reprice uh, the stock market once once these guys run out of uh, money from the Fed. Okay, let's see if we have any other, I think we have a few more questions popping in. Okay, Harriet says, can you clarify recommendations for the buy and hold? Yep. Now we'll also look at the option trading volume as completely I'm not, I'll pull up the option data in a second. Okay, so this is our assets for the buy and hold portfolio per 1000. So you just multiply these by 10. And again, this is not in addition to your pro setup, this is really a replacement. So if you're following the pro setup, you're set to jet. I wouldn't mess around with this. This is really for folks who don't have the capital to follow the real program just with ETFs. Very uh, nice. Oh, go Dan, for it. Sorry, but <laughs> No worries. Dan says, should we be selling a TLT around 180? Uh, so I'm going to give, well, probably a little less. So that actually got us below the 1% yield. So I'm going to start selling this probably closer to 175. Uh, but with the catch, if I, I'm... In my portfolio, I want to be designed to buy and hold this asset for over a year and, and probably closer to two to, if this is really as bad as it may be, we could be holding this asset for five years. Um, just depends on how much debt we have to sell, which right now it's 2.2 trillion on the government side, but on the back end, which people don't necessarily hear as much about is the 4 trillion we've put up uh, from the Fed directly as lines of credit to all these different institutions. And now they're going to go come in with a $2 trillion infrastructure plan. So how long is it going to take to, uh, to raise all this capital? A long time. Yeah, Dan, I think it's going way above 180 because I think the yield's going to go closer to 0% over the course of time. Time-wise, I think we'll see it a slow grind. I think the TLT is going to be a slow grind because they have to slowly raise this capital and the investors who buy this have to be rewarded. Uh, so one, they can't go sell $4 trillion in debt in a week or a month. Uh, two, it has to be a profit if you buy and hold because no one wants to make 1%. So the only reason people are buying this debt is because they believe the Fed will buy it later on for a appreciation in the bond, not for the yield. Uh, but yeah, I, I think we can go as high as 320 on the TLT, uh, depending on how bad this becomes. So certainly above 180, almost guaranteed in 2020. Um, but every year this progresses further and further into government deficits. I'd expect we can hit new mile markers. And so these mile markers, again, are what we're looking at on the yield curve. So let me pull up the yield curve for you guys really quick. Okay, so here's our yield curve, January in orange, February in green, March in black. And so we saw the inverted yield curve, signaled problems ahead, just like clockwork. What was the Fed's moves? First, they dropped rates to, to 1%, uh, and then they dropped it to 0%. They did this in the span of less than four weeks. So what we've seen the 30-year do, just slowly get dragged down by the front end. What am I expecting next? I believe we're gonna see these start, because most of the debt that they're issuing uh, has been on the front end. They're not even loading up on the back end of the treasury curve yet which is what they said they're going to do. So short term, they're funding the stimulus 
with a massive increase in the T-bills and the notes, which is almost completely going straight to the Fed's balance sheet. So that's how they're quickly creating the stimulus uh, money for the government so they can start issuing this out to everybody. In the long run, they want to push it into a low interest 30 year interest rate so that the government doesn't have, uh, have to recycle this massive debt every, you know, these are recycling every week. Um, so that's why I anticipate that they're gonna slowly add that assets under management into the long end and gradually allow yields to drop and that they're not incentivized for a quick push. Uh, so in the long run, I believe that uh, these will go into negative territory that we can see this by the end of this year, break the 1%. And then I think by next year, we can see it flirting with a 0.5. And if this somehow lasts longer than two years, then I believe we could see this potentially flirt with the 0% yield. Now, again, the easy way to track whether uh, something like this is even possible is all a relative play against other bond markets. And so I like to look at, let's go further out. So here's your history of uh, the bond market. And essentially the picture is that governments continue to take over control over their nations and they continue to spend more and more money than they make. So they're growing their deficit at an accelerating pace. So it's the acceleration of debt that really drives products like the TLT higher. Uh, now in a normal world, it'd be the exact opposite. Normally, if your income drops and you wanna ramp up your credit card spending, you're gonna pay a higher interest rate. Uh, but the Fed believes the exact opposite is the solution, which is if we're having economic downturn, we're gonna incentivize bonds and uh, blow out deficits to try to recircle, uh, to redistribute wealth through the economy where it's hurting to try to fix and patch up the problems. And so this has been an easy trend for, uh, since Paul Volcker came out and Greenspan came in. So this is crazy, but I do believe we're gonna have to push towards 0% on the 30 year and maybe go negative to get to the 320 mark, we'd actually see the 30 year uh, dive into negative territory. So for me to believe that's possible, I'd first wanna see the German bond going to much lower levels, which is the best uh, proxy to look at currently. Let me pull up the news and, and then uh, can look at our different options for trials and I'll keep a lookout for new questions too. And we can unmute some people too. Okay, cool. And uh, uh, everyone that is on a trial, guys, I did go ahead and post the links to um, two different website pages in the chat box. Okay, so if you wanna go ahead and look at the chat box, uh, you're gonna see uh, the first link um, will take you to uh, a page that will uh, show you our customer testimonials. Okay, uh, at the top, and then the second page uh, will take you to a page uh, that will show you the options here uh, that Jason will have on the screen. So, uh, and then just real quick, just want to make sure that didn't get buried. So I'll I'll post that again real quick, and then that way you guys can have uh, those links and make sure to uh, click them now uh, to where you you have them saved uh, on your desktop. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and post those in there now, uh, so you can get access to uh, the page that Jason is on. Okay, awesome, Jason. I just wanted to uh, coordinate the time there. Okay, great. And I'll, I'll come back and review these, but just to simplify it, our buy and hold portfolio is really good for passive investors with less than 30,000. Um, it does accomplish what our pro system does, but with, with less leverage, so you don't get the value of the option market. Um, so it does have dis disadvantages. The buy and hold's really great in a nice calm market. Uh, but when you have huge moves and dramatic changes to the economy that will reflect in asset prices being repriced significantly, 
then the option market really gives you a huge advantage because you can get very cheap leverage that you just can't get with inverse ETFs, which is how we're uh, getting a very correlated portfolio and buy and hold relative to the pro. Basic portfolio is great for 30K uh, portfolios because we're trading uh, primarily the SPY ETF. Now, again, I didn't expect a worldwide pandemic to completely reprice uh, every asset class under the sun to make the dollar devalue. We're probably going to dilute the dollar by 50% by the time this is done. So nobody saw this coming. That's why we're not going to be trading the SPY. We're going to jump into the stocks or the ETFs that are going to be essentially just handed trillions of dollars on a silver plate by the government straight into these core ETFs that we did discuss, like healthcare, medical device, biotech, uh, e-commerce, and then Boeing, for example, and ITA. So I like that if you want to just have a simple equity-based strategy or basic portfolio is great at that. Uh, but again, it's really the floor and the roof. You don't have the plumbing, the electricity, uh, or the roof. You have the walls and the floor of a, of a well-built house, but it is missing a key component. Most people follow our pro system. You have the floor, that's our puts. You have the walls currently cash, but again, we can't wait to buy healthcare, medical devices, biotech. I think we're about six months away from that, unfortunately. Maybe four at the earliest, three to four at the earliest, most likely six months before I think we have a great entry point. This strategy has your floor, that's our puts. It has the walls currently cash, but soon it will be those ETFs we've discussed, your roof is your bonds. We never don't have our roof and electricity, plumbing, that's currently precious metals, but I do anticipate getting us into US oil and natural gas, uh, which I think will be dimes on the dollar. I anticipate we can get the equities maybe 75% off, but I, at most 50 to 70% off on those key companies that are gonna really be the benefactors of this massive deficit we're blowing out uh, on the oil market, I think we can get it for 90% off. So we're just going to be patient to, to wait to add that. Okay, so let's look at some news. John, Bolt, John Bolton is holding nothing back. He's been ripping China for quite some time. If you think of uh, Bitcoin as a leading indicator for uh, stocks, well, you could use John Bolton as a leading indicator for <laughs> military action. And he is very outspoken. Okay, uh, here's his latest. China's sinking of a Vietnamese fishing vessel in the South China Sea is yet another example of using a pandemic as cover to advance military objectives. China's belligerent behavior and expansionist agenda is a threat to all nations. Focus must remain on the pandemic, not war. Uh, so China was taking Taiwan off the map with the John Hopkins. They've been telling uh, people to go just crash into Vietnamese fishing vessels, all sorts of things to help expand. So China's big goal is number one, remain in control of the populace, which means mass censorship, controlling their internet, uh, complete control of everything. Second objective is to take over the territories surrounding them. Um, so that's why they're willing to decouple with the US. Phase two was never gonna happen. If you think about it, China has a billion people that they have complete utter control over. They work for 350 an hour. They get taxed at 70%. The communist party makes a trillion dollars a month and are the main benefactors. So what, what would cause China to shut down a trillion dollars of profits a month? Well, it has to benefit, uh, it has to benefit their key objectives, which again are to remain control of the country, which means keeping the communist party in complete control. Uh, and then two, to expand their territory. Uh, so why would they shut down their country? That doesn't give them an advantage. That's why we knew this was much bigger than the flu and that they didn't have 3000 deaths, that that was complete BS. Um, so I do believe that they are uh, making moves in coordination with Russia right now. 
Kyle Bass, China blocked US companies from exporting medical safety gear as Wuhan virus pandemic exploded and the WHO lied about its severity. It's interesting that the WHO was donated $2 billion from the, Ga the Gates Foundation. And Bill Gates is acting as though we've all elected him to kind of lead this whole charade, which is interesting. Uh, now, for sure, he was warning us all about it for quite some time. Um, no other comment on that yet. I'm just digging into that. I usually like Bill Gates. What is life in China like today? This thread is an hour old, slowly returning to normal, not all the way there. Great fear. They are creating a second wave. So this is a great point. We can go do a lockdown and we can slow the exponential growth, make our numbers look good. Uh, but then what happens when we all go back to work? Oh, Karen says the uh, WHO just say the virus can spread one to three days before symptoms appear. Yeah, and they also told us that it doesn't spread between human to human at, at one point. It, it's just completely outrageous what, what's been fed to us. Okay, so here is some light traffic coming back into China. The people are scared clearly. Also interesting that China rolled out a, their own cryptocurrency right before this happened and have been burning cash. So um, I found out a new conspiracy about the 20 million phones that went offline. So a lot of people are speculating, oh man, 20 million people must have died in China. Um, but what if those were secret phones that they couldn't track? Maybe those Maybe this is a big sweep by governments to try to decash societies and ensure they can tax every little transaction. Uh, that's one conspiracy. And that those 20 million phones were secret phones being used to, uh, remember the Chinese don't use, really they do most of their commerce on their phone. Uh, so if they couldn't identify these phones, um, perhaps that is part of the story. This is a communist propaganda Twitter handle, which mind blowing that they're allowed to push propaganda into our media, whereas we can't do any of any in theirs. And also the average, you know, only the communist leaders can have Twitter handles that's outlawed in China. The US and Europe can't fight COVID-19 as firmly as China. As a result, the epidemic will be delayed for long and flow around the globe. Some countries may have repeated infections. Herd immunity will only be in part places and its full formation will claim more lives. We're also really making a big assumption currently that once you do have it once, you can create antibodies and uh, be free from reinfection. However, if A, another crazy virus is let loose or B, this current virus mutates significantly enough, you could get it again next year. Think about the flu, for example. Can you take a vaccine once and be safe? No, that, they're actually trying to predict the mutations uh, that will be strong into the next season. So it's literally like an atomic bomb that is in a slow delay and it's invisible is working its way through the globe as we speak. And the transmission is less than 1% complete. Hipster, he's a more of a comedy commentator, but with good, good points. The Fed should buy stocks because that surely will help the people who are in need of financial assistance. So they sure did what bail out corporate uh, America instantly, but getting everybody else their cash, which is peanuts, uh, is taking quite some time. Uh, they're talking about the Fed buying stocks. I do think that will be where we hit a bottom in the stocks. Will it be at 50%, 75%, 90%? We'll see. The impact of this is yet to be seen, but GDP growth is going to be nasty. Unemployment's going to be nasty. Think about every company under the sun. Try to come up with one company who's going to ramp up spending 
besides Amazon and Walmart? Maybe some gold miners are getting excited right now. Who else is getting excited about increasing spending right now? Zoom, doing well. But it's pretty hard to find just about any other company under the sun. Uh, that's basically every corporation in the world's starting off with a blank piece of paper right now. They're assuming everything they've had in the past is worthless and they got to redraw how in the hell are they going to make money? How are we going to make profit? Because again, stocks rely on profit loss. The bond market relies on growth, accelerated growth of deficits. So at this point in time, I'm happy to bet that corporations are going to have, have to let people go, reduce costs, and restart from scratch a model that makes money, which is going to basically mean restarting everything from scratch. So... I highly doubt they're going to hang on to their existing business model. So this is all getting figured out right now and is yet to be repriced. Uh, but the government accelerating its spending, that I believe you can count on. Uh, Kudlow says he hopes in four to eight weeks to get a good economic snapback. Yeah, right. So a good analogy is, you know, imagine you could run an eight minute mile and then you take three months off and you get extremely sick do you think you're going to be able to pop back up and run eight mile eight minute mile again probably not you're probably going to be at a 16 minute mile and slowly get back to where you're at um and that's what i believe is going to happen to the economy we're gonna to have to rethink everything nobody's traveling for the next two months airlines dumping chemicals and fuel tanks to prevent algae airlines today have cut domestic flights from New York City airports from 271 a day to just 13 a day. Wait, the stock market is up a thousand points because it's all better, but today New York City is being cut off from the rest of the country. Here comes round two. China reported the most new cases in a month. New York is 5.9% of the US in terms of population and currently 37% of all cases. Okay, this is the data that really if there was something that I was miscalculating that would make me change my mind in a heartbeat would be one and only one factor. If I believed that a huge chunk of the population had already had the virus, that it's been here for a long time, then I would be buying stocks and dumping bonds today. But there's a few things that lead me to believe that that's not the case. Number one, the best leading indicator that you have trouble in your area. Okay, then look at that. Here's New Mexico where we're at. 16,828 cases tested. Only 543 were positive, which means only 0.2% of the tested cases are currently infected. So there you go. Uh, this is the data you need to understand that the, the transmission of the virus to the general population is less than 1% complete. So in an hour and a half movie, you've, you've watched a minute of this horror flick. But that's what I would be hopeful for is as soon as we do get say 20% of the population infected and creating those antibodies, that's closer to the peak panic moment where we want to be buying stocks. Okay, we got a comment from Pat. Could you look at the second collapse after the Fed took its first action downturn in 2002? It looks like in each downturns when the actual earnings number came out, the market resumed the drop. Okay, yeah, I'll try to see if I can pull up something like that. Yeah, I think that'll be helpful to understand. I think in two weeks, we're probably going to see a really, because earnings are all going to be real crap. Yeah, we've got, we've got a year of really bad data coming out. Uh, yeah. And we got Cudlow telling everybody in four to eight weeks, we're going to have a snapback. Good point, Pat. Yeah, great, great combination both. Okay, Gordon Chang. There's nothing China can do to ever make us whole for maliciously spreading 
CV, but if we take actions that end the Communist Party rule, we will deter other malign states from harming us in any way. Good luck doing that. They have complete control over China. Uh, quote, the raven loves his gold. Won't be long before gold trades a 2,000 handle and then a 3,000 handle. Uh, again, I think all the gold bugs you got to realize you're fighting against the Fed with an asset that they control the bulk of the supply. So that's why I wouldn't be too exposed to gold uh, currently and believe we can get a, a better, better price uh, in the next few months. Now, I could be wrong. We could see gold split up from stocks, but it really doesn't make sense. Fed gone wild, M1 supply. Uh, Stephen Henrik. Uh, so here's QE1. So, okay, so let's look at this chart. Let's see if I can zoom in at all. So the last crash, 2008, we did rate cuts all the way to here. And then once they believed the losses had been absorbed. So what's the playbook? Okay, we had a big loss in real estate that no bank single-handedly could handle. And the underlying assets were about 300 billion. Once you tr throw in the derivatives, it was like 3 trillion. It was too big for the banks. The bankers between the, main, the meetings you know, in New York would go to the ATM machines, get all the cash out. They were on the verge of the entire financial system collapsing. Okay, but they didn't do rate cuts and QE at the same time. They, they issued the debt. They sold the debt to the big banks TLT skyrocketed during that period. And then once the problem was resolved, then they did QE to vacuum out the debt, give those banks a big payday and they flipped to buying stocks. Okay, then every little source of trouble from there on out, uh, they've related back to QE. And so you can see QE, QE, this is where they did rate, cut, uh, rate twists. So they just tried to restructure the bond market this is actually where you hit the top in the gold and silver market. Um, and then we started going into some rate hikes eventually. And that sure didn't work. We had the big crash in the Christmas massacre. They reverse course went back to debt and rate cuts and now massive rate cuts and massive queue at the same time. You can see this huge spike in the money supply, just a huge jump. So as that money flows through the system, through the bonds, into the real economy, creating price inflation probably takes a good year. That's when I think we're going to see stocks really start to take off. And the Fed's going to have to ignore the runaway inflation while they keep trying to raise all this money. So the Fed has uh, their biggest enemy to accomplish what the government wants to do is inflation risks, which would cause them to need to hike rates. Uh, U.S. total debt. That's, oh, wait, I'm going to go back there. If you're bored at a time like this, you're not intellectually curious enough. We're living through one of the most fascinating periods in our lifetimes. How can anyone be bored? I agree with that. Regrettably, the democratic US has elected a group of weak-minded officials who don't believe in science, but are good at, puck, at buck passing. It's hoped the US public opinion will exert pressure to prompt the US to release its proud error correcting capabilities. Stay strong, America. Uh, meanwhile, Boris Johnson is admitted into the hospital due to persistent coronavirus symptoms for 10 days. The year-over-year -year growth of the U.S. broad money supply is now over 12 percent, so it's the biggest spike in money creation in history. Options liquidity is much worse than S&P futures. Neither humans nor algos want exposure. And uh, let me see if we can pull up Spot Gamma. This is a cool website. We used to use this to predict the SPY um, in a normal market, but now we're really in a highly manipulated market. Obviously, when you throw out trillions of dollars for free to people, uh, but we can see that call open interest is 
actually negative on most of the call option strikes. There's a little bit um, on the 300. This used to be 10 times greater just a month ago. And on the put option side, people are scared to sell puts. So it's just super, super low volume uh, on all of these assets, except for bonds. There's a lot of money flowing through the bonds, much of which is again, the Fed. Oh, this really puts things into perspective. This is really good. Yeah, I, I saw this one too, Jason. This is wild, guys, if you haven't seen this. This is, so uh, this is go for it, go for it, sorry. <laughs> initial jobless claims and just watch what happens. This is just, whoa, puts things into perspective. So yeah, stocks are going up as labor force is being laid off at the fastest pace in history. Only time we've seen anything like this was the Great Depression. Yeah, and uh, guys, important to note, so this is from the start of um, the calculations of these numbers, like literally since year one uh, and, and uh, week one. <laughs> wow. Okay, uh, this guy, Jason Brock's a funny guy. He's got a YouTube channel called uh, Main Street for Wall Street or Wall Street for Main Street. He's got good content. He's a little quirky, um, but I do enjoy his info as much as I can hear it. I've been hearing rumors of a second wave of CV outbreaks in China and cities outside of Wuhan from a num number of different sources. Dave Colum, uh, this guy is a... I believe a biology teacher at a reputable, yeah, organic chemistry teacher at Cornell. Now he didn't even see this coming a mile away, which was interesting. Um, but now he's starting to uh, sharpen his pencil, I'd say. They say China used severe methods of personal isolation is not going back to work. Won't they have a massive second wave given incomplete herd immunity? What am I missing? Right, not missing anything. So we can slow down the the growth for a little while, but it comes at economic destruction. So then you get people starting to starve and you have to go back to work and you're back to square one. Uh, so that's why I think the only thing that works is a global hardcore, not a half-ass, but a hardcore quarantine for 60 days. Bill Gates says 10 weeks, so it's even longer. It has to be global, has to be synchronized, and then it has to become law that you have to wear a mask outside. That's what works. That's what will, uh, that's what the bean counters are going to figure out quickly. And again, the, the, the overlords of the world, the last thing they want is a long-term slowdown. Now, do they like to create panics to create change and opportunistic uh, avenues like buying up stocks, 90% cheap? Sure. But do they want to stop printing money? No. So Eventually, I think one way or another, every government's going to be brought to their knees as they can't stop uh, the deaths and, and the lung failure or the, uh, yeah, the hypoxia, the suffocating. They just can't stop that. Here's New York. This unfortunately looks just like uh, China when we first started watching this. So it's just the same movie playing out. We saw that what happened in China. We saw part one. We saw the intro of the movie in China. They're having a little relief now, but is that going to be short-lived? Probably. So. Uh, Macro voices. This guy's a character. He was convinced he had the coronavirus for a while. I don't know if he did or not. Um, but he does interview really great speakers in a YouTube channel I do recommend, uh, especially their oil expert is this fellow, Art Berman. I haven't watched this issue, it just came out this morning, um, discussing how long can Saudi Arabia and Russia battle this out. Now Russia has almost no debt. They have an extremely high yield on their bonds. Um, 
and they have a totalitarian government so they can punish you know their economy as long as they want they've got backup from china so i think russia has an advantage here also they have a huge gold supply uh, they have just a good good balance sheet for a country going into this now does that mean the us won't go raise some hell probably they will so um they're also creating capital outflow restrictions so that Russia acts as a safe haven asset all in itself. Uh, so it's very interesting to see Russia's little move on the chessboard to dump oil into the market and cause that sell off. Meanwhile, Saudi Arabia um, appears to have some, some economic trouble. So we'll see how that all plays out. China has exported 16,000 ventilators so far. These medical supplies have no doubt played a positive role. So China's trying to come out as a hero in all this, as a leader. Um, although they obviously lied out, <laughs> out of the, the gate and continue to do so. Hydro hydroxychloroquine uh, potentially has good results. But you got to remember, 90, I'm going to say 99% of all people who contract this, survive it without anything. So they can go take 100 people, give them this, and say 100% came out clean all day. Um, you're going to need sample sizes. You know, you need a 1,000. If, if you thought the mortality rate was 1%, you're going to need at least a 1,000 outcomes to have any kind of st statistical relevance. So uh, we would need to test something like 100,000 people with it and 100,000 people without it to see any kind of real result. Uh, now, if the death rate's really 10%, then you could do this with 10,000 people, uh, which is the death rate we're seeing in Spain. Um, and again, that's just with the people making it into the hospitals who are obviously far worse off, which is who we're really concerned about. Um, so regardless, this doesn't really stop the flow of people to the hospital in the first place. And I don't think we're gonna have everybody just pop hydroxychloroquine and z packs for the next 12 months to prevent it. So uh, while this may help with the mortality rate, maybe it's really not a solution that changes our outlook. Okay, we're starting to see uh, manufacturers pumping out masks, uh, which is critical. And we've seen the guest speakers really talk about doing that. Uh, now, I'm shocked to see some of these ventilator products being made are 25000 a pop. Just the bill for this crisis is just getting outrageous. And again, all that money has to be raised at the government level and then handed to the key companies. Okay, a couple quotes from Gunlack, and then we'll go into Q&A to close out for today. Uh, Jeffrey Gunn, that corporate credit markets is well off its low, yet financial media narrative is of continued thaw this week, was there? From the highs of the past two weeks into the close today, here are the returns. All negative for LQV, investment grade, and then the junk bond and BKLN are the same, basically the same product, down 5%. When crashing markets first recover, sellers want to sell at last week's highs and buyers want to buy at last week's lows. Thusly, the gap between the bid and ask becomes very large. The Dow has settled uh, between 20,500 20, with a 7% bid or ask. So he was thinking the SPY could pop as high as 270 uh, and that April will be the next big downturn because of all the bad data coming out. So we'll see if we can hit that 20, 270 SPY target or not. Uh, time's not on the side of that play. That's why we didn't uh, trade it. And again, I'll look to, to double down on our puts pretty quickly here, probably by I'm looking at uh, calendar wise, maybe April 13th when I would do that. And again, the options that I'm looking at doubling on are these four where we have one, this one, we already have three. So I'm happy with that position. Okay, let's see what we got in the comments. Connor in China today from CNN. Large people, large numbers of people have flocked to popular tourist sites in major cities across China over the country's holiday weekend, despite warnings. Yeah, people still aren't taking it serious. 
So if we thought previously the exponential growth rate was essentially a 10 time increase over the period of two weeks, probably at best what we've accomplished with the current lockdowns is maybe slowing that down by 50 to 75%. So maybe now we see a tenfold increase every 30 to 60 days, uh, which again, uh, we're already seeing hospital systems get overwhelmed in large cities. They're not quite there yet, but they will be soon. Um, and so with exponential growth, this gets much worse very quickly. So unfortunately, I think we're going to be in lockdown all of April, all of May, uh, and into June, which I do not believe stocks have priced in at all. Okay, let's see what other questions we have. And uh, if anybody wants to speak, please raise your hand. We'll let you have your time on the mic. Uh, just raise your hand button. If you have questions you want to post in the chat, we can do those too. Very nice, Jason. Thank you very much. And hey, um, Mike O'Malley, if you are in here and you want to share your story, how you used um, some some creative uh, tax, uh, tax setups, um, please feel free to do so. Uh, and Mike actually just uh, became a lifetime member on Friday. So Mike, if you're out there and you're able, uh, if you don't have the kids on your lap, uh, please feel free to share that story with us as well. And uh, also Michael V, um, did you? I just wanted to make sure that you saw the trades that we had up on the screen uh, for uh, for today. Okay, and Mike O'Malley said he needs a minute, but he's uh, sounds like he's happy to share that. Cool. Okay, guys, uh, what questions do we have out there? Um, Vorad, uh, Connor A, Oscar O, um, Andrew, if you're still in here too, uh, I know you had some really good questions earlier. I uh, just wanted to see uh, what we can address now as well, guys. And feel free to go ahead and um, just ask away, type it in the chat box or unmute your microphone and just interact here live directly with us. Uh, and Chasbo, um, you have any questions, bud? I know you've, you've kind of been in here every day for the past week or two on your trial uh, or the past week or so on the trial. Um, let's see here. Eric, uh, just started with us, uh, yesterday too. Eric, did you have any questions at this point, bud? And thank you once again. And Jason, by the way, we, uh, we need to send a gift card, uh, to, uh, Tony Cullen, cause he's the one that rec uh, referred Eric Terrell in. Okay. Uh, and another thing while we're, uh, right, waiting thank for you guys for all the referrals. We definitely appreciate those. Hey, Eric. There's Eric. How's it going, bud? Good. Yeah, I'm here today. Nice. Uh, did you jump into some of your boot camp content last night? Yes, I have. Got, got a good start on it. Awesome. Did you like video number one? Yes. Yeah. Good, good uh, summation of the, the whole concept. Awesome. Very cool, Eric. Well, hey, bud, uh, thank you uh, for, for joining yesterday and, and look forward to, to helping you profit during the crash. Uh, any Thanks questions? Uh, Absolutely. Any uh, questions on your end at this point for Jason? Not at this point. Uh, I've got, got some work to do on the spreadsheet, definitely, but uh, not yet. Okay. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, and, and hopefully, guys, we should have that uh, automated, I'm thinking, before the end of the week at this point. So uh, that will certainly be super neat and a nice, nice little... Uh, investment on our side to, to get it there and, and make things easier for you guys. Um, let's see here. Okay, guys. And uh, Ron Steg, are you still in here? I think you had a question about uh, GDX uh, options in the chat this morning before the presentation. Okay. Hey, Ron, I see you're still in here. Uh, do you have the ability to unmute your microphone, bud? Okay, and then we have uh, Zone 4, WK, Vorad. Uh, guys, please feel free to ask uh, any question under the sun. Uh, more than happy to address them for you and go in as much detail uh, as possible to uh, help clarify anything you may have questions on. I just got a text from one of our clients. <laughs> She's uh, going uh, <laughs> more short. <laughs> I'll say and I'll just leave it at that. Uh, awesome. Um, Okay. 
Okay, guys. Um, any other questions out there? Okay, and, and Mike, uh, Mike O'Malley, are you to the point uh, where you can unmute your microphone at this at this stage? So it's neat. Uh, Mike O'Malley um, is a, a lifetime client of ours, and he actually um, joined the lifetime on Friday, and uh, he actually very strategically. Um, placed the, the purchase through his business that he worked with the same uh, tax strategy company that we're partnered with now uh, to get everything set up. So uh, pretty cool. Um, okay. He said trouble getting on computer. No worries, Mike. Just uh, when, when you do uh, have that opportunity to unmute your microphone, please feel free to, to do that and truly appreciate your time and uh, just sharing that story with the group. Pretty cool. Um, okay. Um, can't wait to get more of those structures in place here personally and, and also on a, on a company basis as well. <laughs> um, okay, let's see here, guys. Um, any, any questions, guys, on markets in general, bond market? I know Jason covers so much in the bond market in a short period of time. It's typically where we get quite a few questions. Uh, and then just positioning, and a lot of people ask about timing as well. Um, yeah, I'm sitting here uh, salivating, Jason. <laughs> I know, right? Time to double up on those puts. Uh, in. I'm seriously, I have my mouth's water. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and anyone that's new, did you guys have uh, questions on putting on the trade, uh, the, the trade alert for today? Uh, did anyone get that trade alert in? Want to share your experience with the crowd? Hey, Karen, uh, did you figure out a plan to uh, connect with your with your hubby? All right. Um, doesn't seem like we have too many uh, questions. Oh, no, Karen said no. Bummer, Karen. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, uh, Kenneth Perkins has his hand up. Go ahead, Kenneth. And thank you very much for, for raising your hand. Um, you can go ahead and unmute your microphone and ask any questions that you have, okay? Okay, and I see uh, Mike has his hand up. Okay, hey, Mike O'Malley, go ahead, bud. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, great, fantastic. Um, sorry it took so long. Uh, I had explained to Dean last week that we were, uh, all of a sudden my wife and I find ourselves being the daycare for my two grandchildren and uh, it's, it, they've been a handful. <laughs> <laughs> How fun, how old are they? Uh, a four-year-old and uh, 13 months. Uh, they're great kids, but they're a handful. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's constant. <laughs> um, so I was mentioning to Dean that I appre appreciated having the, the people from Anderson on uh, Wednesday and Thursday last week. And uh, in fact, uh, we've uh, set up some structures with Anderson we, uh, many years ago now, probably eight or ten years ago. So the structures that we've got are... Um, um, we've got a corporation, but the purpose of the corporation is to, uh, in essence, uh, handle the affairs of the limited partnership. And the limited partnership, uh, and so I've got a thinkorswim trading account in the name of the partnership. Um, the real purpose of the corporation is to spend money <laughs> and not to make money. Um, uh, and uh, we, uh, we set this up in order for me to have a tax sheltered way of putting funds aside for my kids and, and presumably my grandkids, if I were ever going to have any, because we did this quite a while ago. A and um, so what I can do right now is the, um, the, uh, we've joined the lifetime membership that expense can then be, uh, has, was incurred by the corporation. The money that was now given from the partnership to the corporation in order to be able to have the funds to spend. 
and that will be an expense so I can expense it off of um, uh, the money that was paid to the corporation and in essence it's just a great way to um, to be able to grow the funds to be able to grow this account for my my kids and my grandkids and uh, be tax shelter and the essentially this uh, the, 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 the partnership is not discoverable. So basically nobody can see who owns the partnership, who owns the corporation, and there's not any way for them to take any sort of uh, legal action against you. They just don't know that you exist. If that's not beautiful, I don't know what is. <laughs> Very nice. Awesome, Mike. I appreciated it. And, and uh, you know, when you had these guys on the other day, they were also talking about uh, setting up a living trust, which is something that I'm interested in doing. I'm not interested in, in uh, a will going to probate or any of those kind of things. Uh, so we're going to be following up on that too. And I find these, these Anderson folks to be very, very uh, approachable. They're extremely knowledgeable and uh, I'm going to look to do a little bit more business with them going forward. Well, Mike, thank you so much uh, for for sharing here with the group. Uh, you know, just how you've how you've had things set up with them, how you're positioned now, and uh, how you you know literally will just expense uh, your lifetime membership cost with us uh, through the corporation. That's a smart man, Mike, and I, I was proud of you. And I, I I you know asked you if you could share the story, so I, I really appreciate you doing that here live with us, Mike. Yeah, I'm sorry really I wasn't it. sorry I wasn't ready a little bit sooner. We were feeding the kids lunch as you might <laughs> no worries no worries i was i was thinking about you in my head i was like oh mike probably has a kid on his lap right now <laughs> oh how cute but how fun how cool well mike thank you very much and, and once again we appreciate your business too my, my pleasure guys it's uh, i'm looking forward to a very profitable year with you and uh, many many more to come very beautiful very good. thank you so much Okay, and Mike Seebeck asked for that link. Uh, give me one second, Mike, and I'm going to post it in the chat box for you. Okay. Let's see, Kenneth has his hand raised. Okay, and Michael Seebeck, that that is posted in there for you, bud. Okay. All right, guys. Well, Jason, phenomenal uh, presentation once again. Um, I can't tell you how much I'm salivating here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. There's that spy going against us, guys. So extremely confident, no changes. And yeah, that's, that's really a giveaway. It's gapped open one. So didn't trade through there, just gapped higher, a huge handle. And then two, your treasuries are not getting obliterated. So that's really the giveaway. All right, well, wonderful. I do anticipate a simple trade alert, which again will be to sell one of our GLD calls and to pick up a FXI put option. Uh, so that's what you'll get tomorrow, most likely. One, two. I did push the boot camp to our normal time Thursday, and um, we're only going to have Anderson this Wednesday this week. So you guys do have a break between the pro webinar and the pro and the boot camp Thursday. We're finalizing the automation, so we do have the option prices automatically flowing on one sheet. Now we're coding it so that it can can distribute this data. I think we have about 500 sheets now that have to be uh, constantly updated at one time. Uh, so that fix is coming in and we'll get those spreadsheets out to you and we'll continue our lesson on how to uh, to fill out your spreadsheet to look just like mine. So thank you everybody and we'll see you back on Wednesday and you'll get a update on everything, no matter which program you're in tomorrow. So you can rest assured that we are covering all the bases and watching over all the assets that we're invested in. Perfect, Jason. Well, team, thank you so much for taking your time uh, to join us here today. We truly appreciate it. And uh, we're, as always, we're honored to help you uh, profit in, in this stock crash, keep you safe. Okay. And uh, just always uh, 
you know, put as little risk on the table as possible and still deliver profits for you all. So just thank you all for, for that trust in us. And uh, call me if you, if you have any additional questions, 505-322-7515. Thank you. Appreciate your time.